This is Nils Magnus for uh, Linux Magazine, and with us today is Mark Spencer. Mark is uh, the inventor of the famous asterisk uh, project. Hi, Mark. Hello. Thank you uh, for having me. Yeah. Well, um, Mark, you authored quite a bit of different uh, open source projects. You wrote an instant messenger. You wrote a um, network security uh, um, application, and you finally came up with Asterisk, a telephony uh, solution. How come you uh, ended up with this kind of uh, well, product? Well, each product that I developed came out of a need that I had, out of a pragmatic need. In the case of Game, the instant messenger now called Pigeon, uh, I wanted to learn how to write a graphical application under Linux, and so an instant messenger seemed like a tool that would let me connect with my friends better, and that's why I chose it. In the case of Asterisk, I needed a phone system for my small company, and I couldn't afford one, so I decided to just write my own, just like most people will put their own computer and website together to save money. I decided to make my own phone system to save money. All right, so... Um, you came up with Asterisk, and, well, some people told me uh, setting up Asterisk can be tricky at times. Um, so is that uh, a product, this, this program, uh, the right solution for everyone? For everyone, for your mom and dad, or is it uh, more targeted to medium-sized or bigger companies? Can you explain that? Sure. So Asterisk is a core technology um, is very powerful and applies to many, many uh, businesses. W what, uh, what we see today is that uh, there are uh, companies, including Digium, who are taking Asterisk and combining it into a package that is easier to use. So, for example, Asterisk Now you can download, which includes both Asterisk and the GUI and is much easier to set up. Switchbox has very powerful uh, PBX features uh, and a graphical web 2.0 interface as well as integration with Salesforce and uh, Sugar CRM and Google Maps and it's very easy to uh, uh, to install. So these really take the the power of Asterisk and put it behind an interface that's much easier to use to reach a broader community. Okay, um, Asterisk uh, is mainly used uh, of course to uh, taking uh, telephone calls but are you aware of some uh, other more non-standard uh, applications um, that make use of Asterisk? Yes, there are a number of uh, applications in which people use Asterisk to connect other technologies or to provide services that didn't exist before. So uh, in my talk this morning, for example, I gave one example, uh, uh, Botanicals, which uh, allows your plants to call you when they're low on water, for example. Yeah. Uh, another example uh, I gave was the uh, queue games, which is where when you're waiting on hold in a queue, you can play trivia games, and then uh, if you get the trivia games correct, then you move ahead, and if you get them wrong, then you fall back in the queue behind other people. Um, these are just kind of general examples, uh, and there are many, many, many more of where people are using Asterisk really as part of a bigger uh, package to do something new and innovative that wasn't done before. Um, uh, I've been told that uh, the second keynote today uh, by Phil Zimmerman is um, transmitted over the Internet today. Do you know something uh, about uh, uh, conference uh, streaming? Is Asterisk uh, a potential solution for that? Yes, uh, Asterisk includes conferencing, and it can also be connected to streaming interfaces like uh, IceCast to be able to deliver uh, a conference as a stream, or you can take a stream and have it participate in a telephony conference both ways. Ah, okay. So uh, you um, just released recently uh, a new stable version. Is that right? Uh, one for 20, I think, uh, a couple of days ago. Can you tell us a little bit about the latest features? Well, there's actually two uh, paths going on right now. One, the 1.4 one series is the uh, uh, latest stable and the 1.6 is also coming out very soon 
it's in uh, beta currently in release candidates mm -hmm. uh, and there are n not as many features in the new version of 1.4 as there will be in 1.6 because 1.6 includes a, a great deal uh, more features and uh, more um, core functionality for doing clustering for example and, and uh, video and TLS on SIP. So. so when do you expect that to release? The 1.6 version? Well, it's already in beta, but I couldn't give you a date for a final uh, uh, for, for final date. Kevin may be closer to being able to answer that, but usually the answer is that when it's ready, it's ready, um, which is a not a, a typical company response, but is typical in the open source community. So speaking about open source, um, how important is the open source movement uh, for the tremendous success of um, Asterisk? Well, I think the, the open source nature of Asterisk was the key to why the project has been able to be so successful. It's what's enabled us to have so much innovation in such a short amount of time. It's what's enabled us to reach areas of the world that are um, would normally not really be reachable. Um, it's what's enabled it to have the compatibility all around the world that uh, that it's had. Um, even uh, Digium, uh, more than half of our business is outside of the United States, and uh, that's largely enabled by the fact that it's open source. So one final question. What about at your, your personal home? Are you actually uh, still uh, taking telephone calls, or do you uh, just use email and stuff like that? Are you bored of uh, telephony at your home as well, or experience? Explain your setup at home. Well, uh, I usually use my cell phone, okay. um, and I have a. Uh, I do have a home phone line that is almost never used, only for telemarketers whenever they call mm -hmm. in. Uh, and then I have various asterisk installations that are mainly used just for testing. Um, I don't even have an answering machine on my home phone line. Okay. So thank you very much, Mark. No